Last night, Nate was great. Nathan Avaldi pitched into the seventh, the start of a 4 0 shutout. Tonight, Andrew Heaney's second major league start. The Marlins are in Philly. Game two, just for you on Fox Sports Florida. In Philly, T-Mobile Tuesday Night Baseball tonight as the Marlins and the Phillies go at it. Game two of a long four-game series. Fish winners last night by a score of 4 nothing. Back to 500 are the Marlins. Wind is blowing out in what is a hitter-friendly ballpark. Keep that in mind, everybody. Hi, everyone. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Keep it in mind because Andrew Heaney makes start number two. What did you think of start number one? You know, I think it was terrific. He gave up just the one run, possibly had a few nerves going for him in that first inning. In the first inning, Andrew Heaney with the slider and the fastball made a mistake to David Wright. Fastball middle of the plate. David Wright hurting with a solo home run. After that home run, he gave up just two singles, really settled down, and actually started to use his changeup a little better. Talked to Jared Salta Lamacchia. He said he knew he had fastball slider, but the changeup was a good pitch for him in that major league debut. And by the way, Salty's behind the plate tonight, too. Chevron starters. The Marlins see a guy they haven't seen much of at all. And it's David Buchanan. He, he's sort of a Kyle Kendrick type guy. Yeah, sinkers and sliders. He was a non roster invitee. And he's taking the place of Cliff Lee in their rotation for now. There you go. Andrew Heaney gets the ball. Marlins and Phillies. Game two from Philadelphia. Fish try to make it two in a row. Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T Uber's TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-AT&T, mobilizing your world.
by Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. And by your South Florida Honda dealers and sfhondadealers.com. Liberty Bell in Philly. Citizens Bank Park ready to go. Still plenty of sunshine here on what was a warm day. Not that much humidity here today. Very pleasant day in Philly. And here come the fish. Brought to you by J.M. Lexus. Miami's lineup, Jake Marisnik. Derek Dietrich against the Phillies has five hits. He had two last night, including an RBI single. Giancarlo Stanton, Casey McGee, two doubles last night. Jared Saltalamacchia, Marcelo Zuna slotted six. Garrett Jones in the seventh spot. Ed Lucas still in there. Danny Echevarria out still with a uh, sore triceps. And, of course, in the ninth spot is Andrew Heaney. And he'll be facing David Buchanan, a right-hander out of Atlanta. And every time uh, David Buchanan takes the mound, the Philadelphia Phillies uh, say to themselves, this would be a Cliff Lee start because he's taking the place of Cliff Lee while he spends time on the disabled list. Nothing uh, overpowering, pretty good sinker, pretty good slider, was having a good year after a few starts in AAA. So it's nice symmetry that today Cliff Lee actually threw an extended bullpen. Pitcher Penny brings you the first pitch. Riznik takes a breaking ball outside. Lee will, will probably throw a simulated game on Saturday. The Phillies hope to have him back next month. Riznik 0 for 5 last night. He fouls that one back to the screen, and the count is 1 and 1. Marlins 4 0 winners last night. They got two right out of the chute. In the first last night, Casey McGee, a two run double, did the honors. And then added two in the ninth. David Rackley calling balls and strikes. And that is strike two to Jake Marisnik. For Marisnik, a bit of a dry spell after arriving and getting off to a pretty good start. And he pulls that one foul. I think one thing that uh, Jake Marisnik has seen, and he's going to have to adjust to it. We even talked about it last year. He has seen a steady diet of hard stuff inside. Hard stuff in and then soft stuff away. There that it is was, again. And that was in and he pulls it to left. Mayberry in to make the catch. Sooner or later, you're going to have to make that adjustment. Here's the defense for the Phillies tonight. John Mayberry Jr. starting at left. He's a good outfielder. Ben Revere, Marlon Bird filling out the outfield. Cody Ashey, Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley. Rollins and Utley have been together for a long time. John Mayberry at first pitch. Not John Mayberry, Ryan Howard at first base. John Mayberry can cover a lot of ground, but he can't play first, too. His, Carlos Ruiz behind the plate. You know, for a second, I, I thought maybe the Phillies signed his father, who was a terrific first baseman. And, and John Mayberry Jr. has played some first base. Dietrich up the middle. Utley sliding stop on his feet and gets him. Robin Dietrich of a hit. Terrific play by Chase Utley. Dietrich hit it well, and there's two outs. Boy, Derek Dietrich crushed this ball, but Chase Utley made a tremendous play. To the backhand, sliding, pop up, squares himself, and a perfect chest high throw to Ryan Howard. Giancarlo Stanton now. Stanton last night was in the middle of a lot of stuff, not with any really big hits. He did have a single. He was hit twice. He walked. He stole a bag. Scored a run. And he's behind in the count 0 and 1. And there's Buchanan, a little cutter. Catches the inside part of the plate. Quickly he's out in front of Stanton 0 and 2. I'll say one thing. It certainly looks as though David Buchanan likes to get it and throw it. He doesn't waste any time out there. Georgia State in Atlanta. Stanton takes an off speed pitch and drills it down the line. Into the corner it goes. This is going to be double number 19 for Giancarlo. And he's in scoring position. You know what that means? It means Casey McGee's coming up. Over the last five games now for John Carlo. He's hit in all five of those and he has seven hits and 14 at bats. 
Not to mention the number of times he's been on base. Now McGee who banged two balls off the wall in right center field for doubles last night. The first one drove in the first two runs of the ball game. And he dribbles one out towards short Rollins collects it. And fires the first in time to get McGee. Emails and tweets. Tonight's hashtag Twitter Tuesday. You can find us at Fox Marlins or email us Fox Marlins at gmail.com. Fox Marlins at gmail.com. We'll get to as many as we can. We get to the Phillies lineup brought to you by JM Lexus. Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. Carlos Ruiz, the catcher. Chase Utley at second. Ryan Howard is at first. Marlon Bird in the five spot. Cody Ashey. A left handed bat John Mayberry's in left Ben Revere another lefty David Buchanan hits ninth you can see a lot of lefty bats in that lineup and that's good news for Andrew Heaney. Well it will give Andrew Heaney the 23 year old an opportunity to use that slider that uh, is a, a really good pitch for him and you go back to his major league debut six uh, innings gave him just four hits and a run in the last five innings he allowed just two singles. Rollins in the box. The switch hitter flips around and hits right handed. Heaney with that easy delivery catches the outside corner at 91 miles an hour. Fastball command, composure. Those were three things he had in his start against the Mets. Check swing, and it is a swing. The count's 0 and 2. Heaney turning around to check the scoreboard just to see. Second time for Andrew Heaney working with Jared Salta Lamacchia as well. Slider, it hit Rollins. And so Rollins is aboard. He had him 0 2, clipped him on the foot. Here's a look. Well, that composure will be tested right away with the, the speedy Jimmy Rollins. Couldn't get out of the way of that slider that got it. It almost looked like Rollins kicked that back leg out in an effort to get that uh, that thing off the foot. If so, very creative and a veteran move. Here's Car Carlos Ruiz with Chase Utley behind him. Rollins a threat to run. Heaney showed he has an okay move in his first major league start and is still somewhat of a work in progress. 11 stolen bases for Rollins. And a strike. 
to Chooch. I think one of the things that uh, Andrew Heaney showed, he, he showed, as you said, an okay move, but one thing he did show is that he's fairly quick to the plate. He doesn't uh, have that high leg click kick. Gives you kind of a slide step. Center field, busy night for Marisnik last night. He had eight catches out at center field. He makes the catch there. And he's part of the defense tonight for Miami. So starting uh, tonight with a uh, put out. Here's the defense with Ozuna, Marisnik, and Stanton in the outfield. Up the middle, Ed Lucas again at short. And Derek Dietrich, the Marlins have had a good defense. Ten consecutive games without an error. So the defense has been solid. McGee and Jones at the corners, salty behind the plate. That is a new club record. The last team to have a run of nine straight was that terrific 2003 World Championship team that had gold gloves around the infield. Although Alex never won one at short, he probably could have at some point. Of course, the Phillies went into the game last night having played 10 straight without an error, second in the league in fielding, and they had a poor defensive game. Now Utley and I think you and I both talked about this with Utley and Howard and you get even deeper with uh, Ashy and Revere facing the Phillies. Ideally you'd like to have a lefty in your rotation and the Marlins never seem to have that lefty over the last few years. Well they've got one now and Heaney gets a start here in Philly and a strike to Utley. It's early. And a lot of times a pitcher in that first inning has to establish his pitches so far Andrew Heaney and he needs the slider especially with these left handers has really thrown one for a strike. And a swing and a miss see the gentleman behind home plate if we could get that shot again from center field gentleman in the blue polo with the. Uh, Walkie talkie in the speed gun. We get this every time we have emails and tweets on Tuesday. Ben wants to know who's the guy behind home plate that keeps putting the microphone to his mouth after every pitch. That gentleman calls the scoreboard and tells them what the pitch was and the pitch speed. He's not a uh, scout in disguise or a secret agent for the Phillies. He's essentially telling the scoreboard fastball, slider, changeup. Yeah, and down the right field line. On the uh, on the wall, just left of the 3:30 sign, is where they they post that. What the pitch is, how fast it was. So Ben, rest assured, and anybody else that's going to send that email or tweet in, that's his job. And it, we were told the Phillies make sure that that person is a a, a guy that has played baseball and has a baseball experience at a high level, so he can recognize pitches, read scouting reports, understands what guys throw. So it's not just some guy up the street that says, ah, I think that was a slider at 95. That was ball four from Andrew Heaney. Fox tracks, and this is the Fox tracks in the Utley at bat. Have a little trouble with command to this point. Remember, it was the, the first inning. In his debut that gave him trouble gave up a couple of hits of course the the big hit the home run by David Wright. Well if you're going to get the lefties out in the Phillies order. This is one big one to get. And Howard arrives. With Rollins at second and Utley at first. With a right handed bat Marlon Bird on deck. Twelve pitches in, six balls, six strikes. I think the big pitch was the 0-2 that he bounced up there to Jimmy Rollins. Yeah, and Howard swings and misses at the slider. There's that good slider. This is a challenge for Andrew Heaney. Number one, Phillies, in my opinion, are better hitting ball club than the Mets. And he's also pitching in a cozier ballpark than pitching at home.
0 1 pitch. Runners go. Pitch is taken. The throw kicks off of Rollins and goes to the wall. Everybody advances. Rollins scores. Utley ends up at third base. And Jared Salta Lamacchia will get a throwing error on a double steal by Rollins and Utley. Well, just as we pointed out, the Marlins had established a club record 10 straight without an error. This throw skips away from Casey McGee. It clips Rollins, it looks like, on that left shoulder, so it'll be an error to Salt the Lamacchia. The stolen base, each with a steal. Utley gets a steal, but he comes over to third on the throwing error. Miami's infield shifting now with the runner at third. And Howard swings and misses. And Heaney's at one and two. And he needs a strikeout here to get the second out. And then go after Bird. So the Phillies have a run without a hit. And Howard can't hold up. There's the slider. He couldn't get it over against Rollins and Utley, but he strikes Howard out with it. Well, the good good news is that all of a sudden he's found the slider. And if he can limit the damage just to the one run, everything's going to be okay. Of course, he gave up just one run in his last outing, and he lost. But you, you don't expect this game to be a one nothing game. No, it, I mean, watch batting practice here today. The ball was really flying. The wind is a breeze. Not a not a heavy one, but it's headed out, and it's warm, and this is a a cozy ballpark, especially coming off that 10 game homestand for the Marlins. Bird goes after the first pitch and pops it foul and out of play. One of the things that Heaney's able to do because he sits 283, very very lanky, he has that easy fluid delivery, and his fastball, even though it's in the low 90s. Sneaks up on hitters, and I think they're surprised. He misses inside. Chase Huntley at third. Normally this is a ballpark where if you walk guys or put them on base it'll come back to hurt you after a big hit or a home run. Well it's hurt Heaney and he hasn't given up a hit. He's one and two on Marlon Bird. That ball's crushed. Left field and deep and gone. Now he's given up a hit, and it's a long ball from Bird. Well, that's what he was trying to stay away from. So now in his first two major league starts, he's gotten hurt in the first inning with a home run, each by veteran hitters, David Wright and the Mets and Marlon Bird here, and each time it was a fastball pretty much middle of the plate. And the scenario holds true Tommy you put guys on in this ballpark. And it'll haunt you. A hit batter a walk. And now a two run homer by Marlon Bird. Here's Cody Ashey. Hundred and five point three miles an hour off the bat. Garrett Jones a sliding stop on his feet. Heaney is over and steps on the bag, but a messy first, punctuated by a two-run homer. And the Phillies off to a quick start, three nothing.
Philadelphia at three nothing lead. Second inning in Philly. And Miami. Goes back to work against David Buchanan who gave up a double to John Carlos Stanton and that's it in the first. And he buries a, a two seamer in the dirt to Jared Salt of the Mafia with Marcelo Zuna and Garrett Jones. Coming up here in the second we'll get into the emails we'll get into the tweets here in the second. Salty takes a pitch up. This is from Ken. In uh, Estero Florida. Bunting do pitchers work on bunting skills throughout the season or just in spring training. And do you think it's being emphasized enough that's a line drive shot down the line and foul do you think it's being emphasized enough at the minor league level. Probably not because pitchers don't hit enough at the minor league level uh, and I think at this level they do take uh, bunting practice but it's usually off a. Of a coach throwing about 65 miles an hour. If you really wanted to improve on your bunting. Best to go into the cage and tune up that pitching machine at about 90 miles an hour and work on it there. 2 1 is in. This is from Juan. I know Henderson Alvarez doesn't speak English. So, how does Salt Lamaki talk to him? Does Salty speak Spanish? Change up a strike. Alvarez speaks some English. He, he speaks uh, enough English and he speaks baseball English. He just doesn't feel comfortable doing interviews yes. English interviews in English. Three two. It's outside Salt Lamacchia walks to lead off this the second inning that brings up Marcel Ozuna. Check on the scouting report for David Buchanan Two seam we've seen the sinker decent slider and the scary part was when I was looking at the scouting report Kendrick comparisons but because we all know the. The track record of Kyle Kendrick against the Marlins, who the Marlins don't see in this four game series. Ozuna takes outside this tweet from Brendan. It's a disgrace that Giancarlo is not the captain of the National League home run derby team. That of course is Troy Tulowitzki. No one knows home runs like Giancarlo. Back me up, Hutton. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh, remember the old commercials uh, for Bo Jackson. Bo knows uh, baseball. Bo knows this. Well, Giancarlo knows home runs. That's for sure. But instead of tweeting and emailing, vote for him. But we do like the uh, the tweets. Carlos Ruiz out for a visit. Andres, an email. Casey McGee, you think he has a shot at the National League All Star team? 2 0 pitch coming to Ozuna. Pulls it on the ground into left field off the end of the glove of Cody Ashey. And Miami is set up first and second, and nobody out. Here comes Garrett Jones. I, I think Casey McGee has a shot, and I. I think you always have to be patient because as the uh, latter days uh, come and you see votes uh, there there are always certain players with a uh, little injury or aren't able to make it to the all star game nasty hop by Ashy with the base hit from Ozuna. So you never know Casey McGee's as far as his fielding as far as his production and his batting average certainly should be an all star but you never know. I think a couple of things will help McGee. If the Marlins in the next two weeks play well and are sitting a game or two or three above 500, they still will be a real nice story across baseball as a team that lost 100 games last year and at the All Star break is above 500. The other thing that could help him, and it always happens, you get A, the final vote. But also there are injuries and players that are named to an all star team that can't play or can't appear or something happens mm -hmm. at the last minute. If the Marlins are a significant baseball story and Stanton is their only all star. Then there's a, a shot that you get a second player named to the team. Jones into right field that's a base hit Salta Lamacchia to third he'll be held there birds throw is cut and Miami has him loaded. For Ed Lucas. 
Well, the thing about Casey McGee's in the top 10 in batting average came into tonight at 309. This ball is is scorched down and in. That's a great place for Garrett Jones. He likes that two seamer down in that area. So Casey McGee in the top 10 in batting average and he's number five in the league in runs batted in. But you know what the people in Cincinnati are saying Todd Frazier belongs there too. As a third baseman he's got 17 home runs. He's having a solid year. 17 home runs but he doesn't have as many RBI's as Casey McGee. This is a really big at bat right here. Because Andrew Heaney is on deck and so you got Lucas. With the Phillies infield looking for two. Buchanan. And Lucas swings and misses. Buchanan in the words of Frank Menachino, Marlins hitting coach cuts it sinks it. Moves it in moves it out. Maybe a little more velocity than Kyle Kendrick. But kind of the same philosophy. These situations with runners in scoring position as well as Ed Lucas has done this year. And you see the bases loaded. Edge just three for twenty three in these situations. So he's due. Outfield playing him to right center. And Buchanan comes in. And the count is two and one. One thing you know Lucas will be patient. Buchanan hasn't walked a lot of people. That walk to Salt to Lamachia, just his seventh walk, and this is his seventh start. End of the bat, little pop, back goes Utley, and he makes the, he drops the ball. Coming to the plate is Salt to Lamachia, the throw home. He is in there. Wow. Boy, not a not a good choice early in the game with a three-nothing lead by Chase Utley. Now the Phils are calling for an infield fly. I didn't see any umpire call it. The second base umpire didn't call it, but the first base umpire right now, Jim Wolf, is calling it. And so on the infield fly. Well, the batter's out, but the runners can advance at their own risk. And they did advance, and a run scores. Everybody's confused on the field right now. The Phillies don't know what to do. There's a group of Phillies at, around the mound. He didn't drop it on purpose. Brian Sandberg is coming to the home to home plate umpire David Rackley. What's interesting. Salto is safe. This is a force uh, force play. No it's How, not. No it's not because of the infield fly. Yeah, it's not. A but here's play. the interesting thing about the infield fly. You have four umpires out there and only one of them. Called the infield fly and that was the first base umpire Jim Wolf. And so they're going to appeal third base. That Salta Lamacchia may be left too soon. He but did the ball was dropped. Yeah, he did not. Tony Randazzo said he did not. Well, there's a lot of confusion. I guarantee if you asked every one of those infielders out there, they're all confused. Yeah, the Phillies have, I mean, Rollins is looking into the dugout as if to say, what the heck's going on? The Marlins end up getting a run. I mean, essentially, it's, it's like a sacrifice fly. It's 3 1. There's one out. Here's Heaney, and the infield comes in. <laughs> Jones and Ozuna are still out there, and Heaney takes a strike. There is no RBI, just an E4. And I guarantee most in the stands are confused, too. You know the funny thing was. If it if it was a force play at home it would have been interesting to see how they ruled it because with the new clarification with a force play. That a catcher can go into the the lane little tapper to first Howard has it. And so it's going to be up to Jake Marisnik to get something more out of this inning. Major League Baseball actually clarifying that rule. In the last uh, 24 hours so to speak. That now. A catcher can on a force play somewhat block the plate or go into the lane to make the catch on the force. 
Now here's Marisnik. Tommy, you pointed out Marisnik having trouble making adjustments right now, getting pounded in, and then breaking balls away. And there's the breaking ball away. If Buchanan makes a mistake, though, out over the plate, Jake Marisnik will get good wood on. Ozuna and Jones still out there. Pitch is up, and you've got Dietrich on deck. I think uh, Marisnik's going to get something good to hit for the count 2 and 0. Buchanan was 2 and 0 in Triple A before he came up and uh, joined the rotation, replacing Cliff Lee. Down low, and it's 3 and 0 to Marisnik. That's out, and the bags are loaded. Dietrich was robbed of a hit by Utley, and that was in the first inning. Well, we talked about the uh, control that Buchanan has displayed in his first six starts uh, 36 innings, just six walks. Well, he's walked two tonight. So, Bob McClure, the Phillies pitching coach, maybe sees something that he hasn't seen from Buchanan so far in his previous starts. Buchanan in this inning has fallen behind five of the six hitters he's faced. In the first inning, he was out in front of everybody. Miami has just the one run to show for it, but they do have the bags loaded. Dietrich has been swinging the bat well. He did down in New Orleans. Marlon sent him down there to work on his defense. He accomplished that. He was red hot when he arrived, doubled on Sunday, and then had two hits yesterday. One of them knocked in a run. I was thinking about that today when Derek Dietrich was sent down. He didn't go down and mope. He didn't go down and not have good ABs. He went down and he was hot. Look at the numbers. And as things worked out, he probably would have gotten called up anyway. But by doing well, he just has a good feel about himself and his game when he did get called up. Oh one. Pitch is out. And it's a ball and a strike. Dietrich broke him bat out into center field. And Revere is there and he makes the catch. So Miami gets just one, leaves them loaded, 3 1 fills.
get off to a little bit better start. Uh, pitch count got up there. Uh, if it wasn't wasn't for the you know couple double play balls and uh, some early swings in the last three innings, probably wouldn't have lasted that long. So I want to uh, try and get off to a little bit better start. Pound the strike zone fastball a little more. Geico quote of the game. Well, he did not get off to the good start he wanted. In the first, he hit Jimmy Rollins on an 0-2 pitch. He walked Chase Utley. A double steal and a throwing error by Jared Saltalamacchia brought home one run. And then Marlon Bird put one in the seats. And that's how the Phillies got their three. You get a feeling, and we told you this early, the wind is blowing out. It's a warm night in Philly. This is a ballpark with the small dimensions that this could be a high scoring game because neither pitcher looks like they're dazzling out there so far. I also think it's a, the type of game for Andrew Heaney and Salta Lamacchia spoke of this earlier. He's going to have to incorporate that change up a little bit his third pitch too. Bobby has an email. As we've got emails and tweets tonight on this Tuesday in Philly. Last night you made mention of Dontrell Willis. Is he still pitching in the minor leagues? Would the Marlins ever consider signing him to a minor league contract and giving him another chance? I'm not sure if Dontrell's still pitching. But that's why we have a, a crack staff, so we'll endeavor to find out. Swing and a miss, and he gets a strikeout of John Mayberry. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Well, good slider to strike out Mayberry Jr. And the one thing that Heaney's done, he's made some really good pitches to the left handed hitters. He gets another one here in Revere. Revere lines it in the gap and Marisnik won't get it. It's by him and Revere can run and on his way to third he goes. A triple. And just as I say that he makes a mistake to the light hitting Ben Revere who drives the ball deep into right center. And you're right about his speed once it gets there he's going to end up at third base. Ben Revere has four triples now on the year. Marisnik shading him to left center, which is where you play him. He crossed up the defense. And now the Phillies have David Buchanan up there. Dontro Willis has appeared in two games with uh, looks like Fresno triple A Fresno and with the Giants and that was back in April so either he was released or injured and he only pitched two thirds of an inning in those two games infield in be aware of a squeeze or even a safety squeeze at this point entire infield crashing in as Buchanan squared to bunt. Yeah we saw the Mets pull off a a suicide squeeze successfully. That bunt foul back to the screen. With further research shows that uh, Willis was released in April. Of course, he and Jimmy Rollins, close friends, same high school in uh, Alameda, California. That's why his name came up last night. You can with a count one ball one strike. Tries to knock one through the infield and fouls it back. That is one. And two Stan and Stan in Asheville. Who are. Always contributing on email and Twitter Tuesdays. A swing and a miss. Do you think that the lack of an old fashioned windup puts more stress 
on a pitcher's arm. I don't know if it's the lack of the old fashioned wind up. I think if you look back at the old fashioned wind ups and the pitchers they they weren't max effort guys. Yes, the, the old fashioned velocity. Yeah. Isn't what the <laughs> new age velocity is. I think that's the biggest stressor. On uh, arms today. But we always appreciate hearing from Stan and Stan. Sliders working a lot better now for Andrew Heaney. <laughs> Miami Sportsman says that I did vote for Stanton 35 times, but still want to know how they pick captains for the home run derby. <laughs> I think Tulowitzki probably has a little better resume at this point than Giancarlo. And, and remember, Giancarlo's all star appearance, he didn't appear because his knee. Uh, didn't allow him to. So Tulowitzki with a little better resume at this point. I think at the same time too, they want someone who's going to start in the All Star game. I think Tulowitzki is is pretty much guaranteed of that. That one popped up and hit Rollins in the face. Would you agree on that? Yeah, that's another another point. So thanks for the votes though, for voting for Stanton. He needs it. Getting a few extra seconds from the home plate umpire David Rackley. Haney's O2. It's up. Uh, off of Salt to the market, takes a bounce, scoring is revered. Mm. This has been a tough two innings for both Heaney and Salt to the market. And you would have thought, given the fact that they worked together before one other time in that major league debut, that they would have a little more comfort with each other. It's going to be a wild pitch. Two, two. And it's in. Let's see where this slider. Boy, it bounced way. Salty didn't have a great effort at it with the backhand, but I still don't think he would have blocked it either way. And Heaney loses Rollins. You know, in his last start, Tommy, he showed great composure after giving up the right home run. I think he's still searching for that here tonight. I agree with you. And I think you can see that he's all over with the command of the fastball and especially. The slider. The slider has good break to it, sharp break, but he's had trouble controlling it. Rich, Tommy, crack staff. This is from Miami Sports Minute. Did some research. Can you name the last player to lead in home runs, RBIs, and not start an All Star game? Rollins is running. He got a huge jump. Heaney never even saw him, and he steals the bag. He could have walked a second. And I think another part of that composure. But on the other hand, it's it's. It's part of that infield third baseman first baseman catcher somebody in the infield to just warn Heaney ahead of time. Hey, be alive. This guy is going to run. Give him a look. Make him stop. He puts his head down. Rollins put his head down. With that stolen base, Rollins has tied Hank Delahanty for second in Philly history. Yeah, 438 career stolen bases, second stolen base tonight. Center field, that's well hit. Marisnik back and there and makes the catch. So, 
Last player to lead in homers, RBIs, and not start an all-star game, huh? In an upcoming telecast, it's brought to you by AT&T. Citizens Bank Park in Philly. Giancarlo Stanton doubled in the first. And he takes down low. Phillies have a 4-1 lead. They got three in the first, one in the second. Miami got one in the second. Stanton was on deck when Dietrich flied out to end the inning in a one hopper that Rollins picks. Makes a strong throw and gets Stanton. Nice play by Jimmy Rollins, a four time Gold Glove winner. Well, we've seen Stanton hit shots to third base. We saw him eat up uh, David Wright a couple of times. That ball almost stayed up Jimmy Rollins, but he played it nicely. Out of a short hop, gets to his feet. Now McGee takes in Jared Saltalamacchia. Well, they have a challenge thrown out to the crack staff. Last player to lead in homers and RBIs and not start in an all-star game. Preston Wilson, you had that big year in uh, Denver with the Rockies, with Colorado. Did you lead in homers and RBIs at the break? Uh, I remember leading in RBIs. I don't know if I was leading in home runs at the time. I had the guy 23 home runs and 91 RBIs at the break. Uh, but I know the RBIs I had. I'm not sure about the home runs. Hmm. Hey, I'm, you, I'm just impressed with the 91 RBIs at the break, though. What, nice going. What did you finish with 144? 141 that year. I think that record is still standing. Yeah, 91 at the break. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, what have you uh, seen today in this ball game? What are your impressions so far? Uh, so far, I see two young pitchers kind of going at it. I see Haney having a little bit of command issues uh, at times, uh, but you can definitely see the sharp slider. You definitely see the good fastball. He's got a lot of upside. It's just, you know, his first few, first few major league starts, he'll be fine. Well, Haney right now, the 4 1 deficit, a little bit of shell shock look. Saltalamachia up there. He walked back in the second. And the counts one and one. Crack staff Tommy apparently does not yet have that answer, but they're efforting. That was a that's terrific a tough one to to, to kind of zero in on. Terrific tweet. Of course, Giancarlo Stanton now fourth in the outfield voting. He could. 
not start the All Star game, but still lead the league, the National League, in home runs and RBIs. So to Lamaki into right field. That's a hit. McGee trots into second. The Marlins are putting wood to it. I mean, they've had some really good swings against Buchanan. Here comes Ozuna. You know, you look at the uh, you look at the scoreboard. We talked about it last night. This is certainly a ballpark. Good job by Salty there. A ballpark where no lead, especially a three-run lead, is safe in the third inning. So the Marlins with good swings have to keep plugging away, get some men on base, and if you get one big swing, all of a sudden you're right back in the game. Marcelo Zuna can supply that one big swing. Ozuna taps it out towards short. Out there, at least relay, safe at first. McGee at third. Ozuna at first. And here comes Garrett Jones. It's one thing we've seen Marcelo Ozuna do a little bit too much of lately rolling over on pitches we saw a lot of ground balls to the left side a double play ground balls to third last night and especially early in the count Jones 0 for 2 yesterday. A loud single in the second. That pitch was out. Checkers brings you Fox tracks. This is not a true look from center field in this ballpark. You're offset. Many parks now have that direct look, so in and out can be a little deceptive. But that's why. The good folks at Checkers bring you Fox tracks. That one was a strike. You see it when you're off center like that. The balls that look in are actually on the corner to a left-handed hitter. The ones that look like they're on the corner on the outside part. Oh, Ozuna gets picked off. That's just bad baseball right there. You cannot have that happen in a major league game. For the Marlins in the bottom of the third. The Oakland Athletics are here on a 
fireworks Friday here in Miami when the Marlins get back. Arrive early for happy hour. First 10,000 fans get a Marlins energy team poster courtesy of Net 10 Wireless. Stay after the game for an incredible fireworks display presented by Chevron. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. Well, this has been a real uneven effort by the fish. They've uh, struggled in the field. They've struggled on the mound and Marcelo Zuna getting picked off. And in watching that replay, he wasn't trying to steal. He wasn't running. He just got picked off. Down by three, four, yeah, a lot, one. Of, a lot of times you'll see a guy get picked off. He's leaning a little bit, but Ozuna wasn't leaning. He just flat out got picked off. On the mound for Andrew Heaney. He's walked to. He's hit a batter. He threw a wild pitch to score a run. Here's Saltomachia with a throwing error for another run to score. The Phillies have just two hits a homer and a triple. The homer by Marlon Bird, the triple by Ben Revere. You can see when Andrew Heaney gets ahead, especially to the lefties. If he's able to twirl that slider up there, and they've not had good swings at it. But the key is the fastball command to get ahead. Jones flips. He needs there. Steps on the bag. That tweet by uh, Miami Sports Minute has the crack staff baffled right now, Tommy. Last player to lead in homers and RBIs in their league and not start the All-Star game. I got a nice tweet from Thomas. Thomas wants to know and all the hits it took Jimmy Rollins to put together to break Mike Schmidt's Philly team record. How many of those hits were against the Marlins? Jimmy Rollins has 277 career hits against the Marlins. Now Howard takes a strike. Ryan Howard struck out back in the first. Lee Paul wants to know what's the deal with Nicolino. You think the Marlins will see him at any time. Busy day so far for Jones. Heaney's over there. And another 3 1. Two outs. I don't think you can rule out anybody that's having some success. Justin Nicolino left hander has been throwing the ball well. But uh, you have, to have places to put him first. Nicolino's pitched very well. What was he last? Uh, seven and two with an ERA. Yeah, he had a complete game. In the high twos or low threes. Here's Marlon Bird who hit one in the seats in left center field. Benji wants to know who would win a race? Saltalamakia, McGee, or Garrett Jones? Who would you go with in that tree? I'd go McGee. I'd go McGee. Yeah. Fanatic. Fanatic was terrific last night. Although the local authorities were looking for him after the game, they were investigating a, a 98 mile an hour hot dog. That the local pork author authorities. That somehow got the uh, pig mascot on Dollar Hot Dog Night. The pig mascot wandered onto the field and the Fanatic went after him. To be a nice inning, by the way, if Andrew Heaney can come out, he's already gotten a tough, couple of tough lefties, and Utley and Howard. If he can retire a tough right-hander, a veteran right-hander, <laughs> Marlon Bird. <laughs> That's just what you want when you come to the ball game, right? A head full of green fur. Thirteen home runs for Marlon Bird. 
who uh, kind of quietly is having a real nice season. 45 driven in. Quick, uh, quick tweet. Juliet asks, uh, why do they call it infield fly if Utley, is the second baseman, was more towards the outfield? Well, it's declared if the ball can be caught by an infielder. So it doesn't matter where that infielder is if he is an infielder. And of course, that was a play of much dispute in the postseason in Atlanta. On a pop up, I believe it was the Cardinals Braves series. Into a left field, shallow left field. Two balls, two strikes. All right, Tommy, the uh, kids demand to see it again. The ATT U versus Rewind. Let's go back to last night. The fanatic was firing hot dogs, and then look, he saw the pig, and the pig was squealing and scared, and then poof. right on target. The nice thing is he has a silencer on that thing. <laughs> Count three and two, 58 pitches for Heaney. Working here in the third in a 4 1 ball game. Sharp ground ball, Lucas backhands, plants, long throw, very nice play. Lucas started that dynamite double play last night, makes a nice one there. Tommy Hutton, and it's the Phillies who will be at Marlins Park on Tuesday, July 1st. A $20 ticket gets you a baseline reserve ticket. It also gets you a limited edition Marlins t shirt and a pregame Marlins Park tour. It's all part of Social Media Night on Tuesday, July 1st. Marlins.com slash social media to get those $20 tickets. Garrett Jones pulls one foul. Jones, Ed Lucas, Andrew Heaney scheduled in the fourth. Against David Buchanan in a really odd game. The Marlins have out hit the Phillies five to two. But the Phillies have taken advantage of uh, numerous Miami mistakes. I think the crack staff has an answer or at least a guess. At that question last player to. At the break, lead the league in home runs and RBIs and not start in the All Star game. Ryan Howard in 2008, 28 homers, 84 RBIs. So we'll see if that uh, viewer will send back confirmation. It's not an easy one to research, so 
our hats off to I think it was Miami Sports Minute on Twitter. That one fouled out of play. Good email here from Coral Springs. Always nice to hear from Coral Springs. Where will Kristen Yelich play when he comes back? Will he be in center field? And will Ozuna stay in left? Well, I can. Uh, into the shift. Shift pays off there. Jimmy Rollins with the play. I, I can tell you that Christian Yelich is playing center field tonight uh, for Jupiter. Had a base hit his first time up, stolen base. So everything progressing well. There's Ed Lucas. That's a good question. Because Ozuna was primarily playing most mostly center field. But then he made those tremendous throws as a left field. And then reminded everybody that in center field you don't get to show off that arm as often as you do from a corner outfield spot. And we do know because we've seen Christian Yelich play center field. He can play center field. I think if you of the three young outfielders the best center fielder is Jake Marisny. The question is. Of those uh, three outfielders. You got to hit well enough and produce to be in that starting lineup. Lucas is called out on strikes. With a fastball. And obviously when you're a young player. It may take you a year or two for everybody to figure out. What you're going to be offensively. It's a great pitch. That yeah, was. You saw the movement on a pitch, a two seamer that started off the plate and came back. It stayed down. It was a low strike, but it was in the zone. A lot of uh, trade questions. Fans want to know Tommy Hutton, will the Marlins be buyers or sellers? That's a popular question always in July. David Price's name is out there. Jeff Smarja. Jason Hamill as starting pitchers. But I feel this is just an opinion that if the Marlins hang around and stay within a couple three games of the lead they're certainly not going to be sellers. They're going to try to improve their club. Three and one to Heaney. With Marisnik waiting. There is a lot of baseball to be played before the end of July and the trade deadline. And he cracks one into right center field. Bird drifts over and makes the catch. And David Buchanan sails through the fourth.
to by T-Mobile, sponsor of Tuesday Night Baseball. At Palmetto 57 Nissan 57 Volkswagen, home of your money-back guarantee. And by the Florida Department of Transportation, reminding you to drive sober or get pulled over. Citizens Bank Park, Andrew Heaney. A, uh, a wild ride in the first and the second to be sure. He settled down in the third. And here he goes in the fourth to email or tweet us. Hashtag your uh, tweets with Twitter Tuesday. And you can get the uh, tweets at, at Fox Marlins. The email address is foxmarlins at gmail.com. Foxmarlins at gmail.com. I'm reading this tweet just because I like uh, Tut the Mutt wants to know. Is there a reason the home team takes the third base side for their dugout? Well, that's not the case here. The Marlins have third base side. A lot of times it's just the configuration of the ballpark, how it's built, the facilities for the home team, a little more room, more room for a weight room. So a lot of it depends on that. Yeah, you, know, you always, in, in any ballpark, have a much bigger clubhouse, weight room, oftentimes. Offices are on a certain side that are built into the ballpark and in the Phillies case their weight room and clubhouse sit on the first base side Marlins on the third base side and the Phillies front office their executive offices kind of right behind home plate. There's a 1 1 Marlins Park has got the Marlins executive offices mostly on the third base side right above the expansive Marlins clubhouse weight room training facility all of that video room. Cody Ashy's up and he swings and misses at a Heaney slider. And Heaney gets a strikeout. To open up the fourth inning here's a question go ahead. It's from Brett in Lamar. Missouri as we watch this wipeout slider from Andrew Heaney. Wondering when the Marlins game is in a road ballpark, do the pictures we see on the telecast are they controlled in Miami or are they controlled on site? And that is from Brett. They are controlled by a group of very capable, skilled television technicians, artists, craftsmen, and women. In the uh, production truck that is parked here in Philly out underneath the uh, bleachers in right center field. Some of those people are with us from Miami and some of those are local uh, Philly folk. <laughs> some like us just wandered in off the street. Yeah. It is like a traveling uh, circus sometimes. With uh, cameramen and women. Audio folk. Tape machine operators, graphics, the computerized pictures, numbers that that Fox box you see on the screen there with the score, the pitch count, all that uh, comes from here in Philly, but always uh, handled meticulously by Bill Wadley. Tim McDermott is our producer. Jim Holly. Is our director there and, and we have always one of the best uh, stage persons Kathy here in Philadelphia that uh, makes your world easier. Yes she does. Breaking ball misses in. The only thing that is back in uh, Miami the Fox Sports Florida studios are actually in Fort Lauderdale. Are uh, Craig Mitterveni and Carl Pavano. And the Fox Sports Florida girls. Yes. I think they're out to dinner next door at the steakhouse. Real quick uh, tweet from Brent, because we were talking about Jorge Cantu a couple of weeks ago. And Brent lets us know hey, Rich and Tommy, did you know that Chris Folstad and Jorge Cantu play on the same team in South Korea, the Doosan Bears? I did not realize that the Volstad was on that team. I, I knew that Volstad was in Korea, but I did not know he was a teammate with Jorge Cantu. Two and two the count on John Mayberry, who's in left for the Phillies tonight. 
and he's participating in his own way. Email Twitter Tuesday by hitting foul balls. Miami Sports Minute says, "Well done, crack staff." That's the answer. So it was Ryan Howard, 28 homers, 84 RBIs at the break. Did not even make the All Star team. In the hole is short. Lucas to first in time. So there are two outs. Ben Revere comes up. Little Saturday baseball going on. It starts on Fox Sports 1, 3.30 Eastern. You got Twins, you got Rangers, and then Baseball Night America on Fox takes over. You'll get either Red Sox, Yankees, or Braves and Phillies. Braves and Phillies. Should be a good matchup. Phillies are playing better. They had won five in a row before this little three game skid. Revere triple back in the second. And Marisnik makes the catch, and Heaney has settled in. He has retired seven in a row. Now what this is, this is a place where they've chronicled all their uniforms throughout the years. The former Florida Marlins, current Miami Marlins have this to look forward to because there are going to be some changes. This is the first one. This is when they were the Philadelphia Athletics. This is back in the Connie Mack days. Man, managed, played all that stuff all by himself. He probably did the Bugs Bunny pitching thing too. But now you go through here, 1883, the first Philadelphia Phillies jersey. Those things look hot. Whoa, uniforms. 1910. Goes on around to another Phillies jersey, 1921, all throughout the years, the 30s, the 40s. When you come down to the bottom row, now you got the 1960s and you got the Steve Carlton area, Mike Smith, and of course, the ever venerable John Cruck, who we still see today on television, is the final jersey, the current jersey that they use right now. Pretty cool deal. Back to you guys. Very nice, Preston Wilson, Mitchell and Ness. I think they still have that downtown location, which used to be a stop for the Marlins when the Marlins did their uh, throwback. Was it Fridays? Yeah, with uh, with basketball or football, uh, hockey, jerseys. Got a little a tinge of nostalgia when I saw that uh, Mike Schmidt and Steve Carlton. Juan Pierre was always rocking something interesting. Yeah, whether it was basketball or not. Dontrell, Dontrell Willis. Dontrell too. usually had a, a San Francisco Bay Area. He would have a, a Golden State Warriors. Or an Oakland Raiders or Oakland Athletics from his day. Marisnik. Ground ball in the hole. Rollins better hurry. And he does. And he gets him in time. Preston Wilson, the Mitchell and Ness store downtown is just for, for especially for a guy like you that played the game, to see some of those old time jerseys uh, has to be pretty cool. 
you know, it's a lot of fun because it, it takes you pretty much through your life. You remember the times in your life where you saw this jersey or when you saw a player play in that particular uniform. And when I saw the Mike Smith, when I remember, I lived in Lakewood, New Jersey, which is about 45 minutes from here. So we would drive here just as well as we drove to the Mets games when my dad played. And I got to see Mike Smith play in that jersey. You know, I remember Tony, Tommy Hutton, when we were talking about you, looking at the old clips of you, seeing you in those jerseys. Like, that's a lot of fun for me. It takes me back to my whole life. Pitch misses outside. Now, had the Marlins started the throwback Fridays when you were a Marlin, or did that come after you'd left? The Marlins were so young, we had futures jerseys. Like, we had, like, these space age jerseys. There was no past from the Marlins when I was there. <laughs> well said. Well put. You had to read a tweet from uh, not one, not two, right LeBron. I like them. Just, just can I get a shout out? I've just returned from Afghanistan. I've been a lifelong Marlins fan. Go fish. All right. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Glad you're back safely. Dietrich walks one out walk and that's in front of Stanton. And so Miami gets Stanton to the plate. For a guy that had great control coming in, Buchanan. Those 3 0 pitch to Marisnik wasn't uh, a thing of beauty. Ends up walking Dietrich here. Could and very easily have walked back to back hitters. And he has fallen behind Stanton now, 1 0. You and I talked about this. <laughs> We have, we have so many conversations sometimes I wonder if, if we talked about it on the air or somewhere else but with Stanton up there and Dietrich at first base we saw a lot early in the year. Stanton ah. line drive left field and off the base of the wall Dietrich racing for third Stanton is on his way to second and he's in there standing up good now I can finish my point. <laughs> Early in the year, we saw a lot of guys, and we said, you know, yes, some of it is Casey McGee hitting behind Stanton, but a lot of it is the guys that were hitting in front of Stanton were getting on base, and pitchers had to pitch to him. They couldn't pitch around him because they were men on base. So it's good to see Dietrich draw the walk. He was on base. Stanton crushes this double. The amazing thing about and now the Marlins are in business. And I think the, I think that's really where. The Marlins have missed Yelich, as you point out. Yelich was hot right when he got hurt. Christian Yelich, as uh, Tommy pointed out early in the telecast, is uh, doing fine on his rehab. He is due to come off Sunday against Oakland. And so, Sunday against Oakland, by all accounts, you'll see Christian Yelich in that leadoff spot. Here's McGee now, and he's in a big spot. Infield's back. Dietrich. At third base, stands at second. McGee has singled and he's bounced to short. I think it's interesting that Casey McGee has hit a couple of balls to the left side. We haven't seen that a lot. His base hit went between third and short. Casey McGee now has hit in 15 consecutive games on the road. There's another big part of that Marlins turnaround playing on the road. Hits by direction for hits McGee. And it's exactly what he has accomplished in terms of approach, and that is stay middle. That's a good mix. Counts a ball and a strike. The hard part about Buchanan, and we've seen it with a few hitters, is if you think pole, you're going to roll over and hit it to Rollins at short. Two and one. Salta Lamaki is on deck. Miami now out hitting the Phillies. Six two. Stanton has two doubles.
McGee got it off the end of the bat. Revere does not throw well. Tagging and scoring is Dietrich. Stanton holds at second, and McGee drives in the run. So 47th RBI for McGee. Two outs, and here's Salta Lamacchia. Yeah, you have to be aware of that as a base runner. Ben Revere in center field does not throw well at all. You put him in a in a big spacious outfield, and you can take advantage of him all day. But he plays shallow, and he's in this ballpark. It's a little tougher. Good job by Casey McGee bringing home Derek Dietrich. Salta Lamacchia has walked and has single. Infield will not shift, but Udley's out on the outfield grass. And a breaking ball misses in. The Phillies, no doubt. We're scouting the Mets series and remember in a shift like this Stanton stole third base. Remember he was racing David Wright to the bag. Yeah it's a situation here if. If Stanton's thinking about doing that. You have to be 150 percent right though. It's a 4 2 ball game. Breaking ball strike. One and two. Sheila wants to know do all the umpires rotate through New York and the replay center or are they just the same umpires there each day and night? They rotate. There are two crews, two sets of four that rotate through New York. It's out. Buchanan was walking off the mound. It was way out. Randi Institute brings you Fox tracks. Well, it's a, it's a situation where Ruiz was set up there. He hit the target. So everybody in the stands thinks that he threw a strike, but you saw how far it was outside. This is with a 2 2 and the count full at 3 and 2. Ozuna is on deck. And Salta Lamacchia walks. And so first and second, and here comes Ozuna. You and I had a had a great conversation with Frank Menachino. Talked about a number of the hitters. Talked about Marcelo Zuna. And one of the points he made, and when we see him do things that we wonder what's going through his mind, is that he said Marcelo Zuna hardly played double A. So he's basically a guy who's played a ball in the big leagues making the adjustments here. He only played 10 games in double A in 2013. And you obviously aren't pitched to the same way. In the major leagues as you are in single A and that's Menachino's point is that he spent. Almost what five six years in single A baseball. And then all of a sudden. Finds himself in the big leagues last year. Injured half of the year. Still has success, but taking a fastball there for a strike. You see last season's number 70 games. I think there's no question he's talented. Oh, there's no question about that. You look at his arm. You look at what he does defensively. He plays the heck out of center field. He's got incredible power. The seasoning is what's coming now. That learning curve is steep. Learning what a pitcher is going to throw up here is different than what a pitcher is going to throw in a ball in a situation. So he's going through that learning process. 
what he thinks a pitcher might throw isn't what he might throw. Stanton at second. Salta Lamaki at first. Miami has scored a run, but down two here in the fifth. Busted him in. Counts full. Everybody gets a head start. Look how far that ball was in. Mario Hollins in the Phillies pen. Saw him a little bit last night for an inning and a third. Well, Garrett Jones is on deck. So you wonder if the Phillies lose Ozuna if Hollins comes in to face Jones. It would be somewhat of a surprise, but then you look at the pitch count 92 right now for David Buchanan. And Ryan Sandberg certainly didn't want to let this lead slip away. And the most in any inning right here in the fifth. Runners on the move and Ozuna fouls it back. This is a spot for a young hitter. Buchanan. Another 3 2. Got him. Off speed pitch. And Ozuna strikes out. And Miami leads two more. And the Marlins host them of the weekend series on Saturday. It's a Saturday spectacular, a 4-10 start. Venezuelan Heritage Night at the ballpark. Enjoy a live concert on the West Plaza with Latin Grammy winner Chino Inacho, presented by Bacardi. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. They are back together and they are at Marlins Park. Chino Inacho and Oakland, of course, a Gaudy 47 and 29 losing to the Mets tonight. The Mets have a 7 1 lead over the A's in the bottom of the fifth inning. They are knocking around Scott Casimir. In fact, they've knocked him out of the game. And that's a uh, Bartolo Colon start for the Mets against his uh, former team. The that, that leads us to a tweet about uh, Scott Casimir, by the way. By uh, Rotolo954, Rory McElroy's <laughs> wants to know are the Marlins going to find a success story the same way the A's have with Scott Casimir? Well, 
Scott Casimir has been a nice uh, story. Not tonight. He's got knocked around, but he's had a nice year, and it has been a good find for Oakland, who seem to do that all the time. Well, Miami has discovered a guy in Casey McGee who's breathed life into his career. Without question. Ronnie Cedeno is hitting so David Buchanan's day David Buchanan gets through the night five innings four walks two strikeouts six hits and gives up just the two runs and the Marlins have many opportunities but still a lot of baseball to be played and Heaney who is still in there strikes him out with a fastball see I love the way. Andrew Heaney's come back eight in a row now he's retired. Things didn't look good in the first inning. Wild pitch after a triple to Revere in the second inning he came in to score. But you know what he got the composure back. He got the command of the fastball back the slider's been better. And he settled down in that Mets. Oakland game as Rollins stands in. Chris Young who might be playing for his job. This weekend there were talks that the Mets might release him. Just hit his second home run. So he's hit two homers in the ball game. Curtis Granderson hit a two run homer. How's Travis Travis Darno is up and he homered. How has uh, Bartolo Colon done at the plate? <laughs> he's one for one. <laughs> Colon has a hit. How about that? <laughs> and that game is now eight to one, by the way. So the Mets stay hot. Well, not over yet, but yeah, they're halfway through eight to one Mets. I like the chances. That's Sandy Alderson going up against his old team as well. He was so there are a lot of connections. He was Moneyball before Billy Bean was Moneyball. Help me out, Chris Young, wasn't he with Oakland? He was. Yeah. So there you go. A lot, lot of connections. He didn't play a whole lot. He was their fourth outfielder in the left field. Rollins with a base hit, and Carlos Ruiz comes up. If you're just joining us Andrew Heaney had a rocky first and second. He hit Rollins in the first. Utley walked. A double steal throwing error by Saltalamaki a two run homer by Marlon Byrd. Second inning triple by Ben Revere. A wild pitch to score a run. Remember the huge jump that Jimmy Rollins got. Back in the second inning. So Andrew Heaney's going to have to keep a close eye on him. I think what he did, he, he came set and then dropped his head. And Jimmy Rollins has watched him and he said, you know what? When he drops his head, he doesn't come over to first. He just took off. So he just got to change it up, give him some different looks. Ruiz tonight has flied twice to center. From reading reports and listening to scouts and reading articles, one of the things that Heaney refined in his time in the minor leagues was his tempo. That pitch on the edge and at the knees. Got a nice tweet from Stephen who was able to get a nice uh, picture with some. Kids and maybe his family down there with Preston. Good stuff. One one pitch and that bounces away from Salt to Lamakia, who has had a, a tough ride back there with Heaney. Another slider that bounced but got Ruiz to chase it. Salty turned the glove over, tried to block it, but you get that ball moving when it's a slider, it has spin. Catchers will tell you that's a lot tougher than a fastball that's in the dirt. So with one out, Rollins in scoring position. You got Ruiz, who always seems to carry a great batting average with runners in scoring position. Time called. Ricky has some uh, uniform questions. 
Will the Marlins ever wear the blue jerseys that boys to men wore when they were in concert Saturday after the ball game? I don't know. Yeah, we don't know those answers. I heard the uh, I heard the jerseys look nice. They were sort of a powder blue, I guess. How many home runs? He also wants to know. Do you think Giancarlo would hit in the home run derby? There's no telling, just depending on you know, format. The, as we've watched the home run derby over the years, it's it's the guy who paces himself. There's a lot of times the guy maybe in round two hits a ton of home runs, but runs out of gas for round three. The home run derby to me is like going to the all-you-can-eat buffet in Vegas or Atlantic City, <laughs> and they they don't have any food, but they have dessert. And so it's all you can eat dessert, which sounds like a great idea. Until about a half hour into it, you're you've had too much dessert. Did that make any sense? It did. It did because it got me thinking about dessert. But but a lot of people don't realize. I mean, the guys participate. They get heated up. They hit the home runs. Then they have to wait around for a while before the next round. That's the hardest part. Any of the guys that have ever participated in that will tell you that part. They have changed the format somewhat with the brackets after the initial round. Up the middle, Lucas cuts it off and gets the out. Rollins moves to third. Ed Lucas has played a real nice shortstop. He was telling me before the game that that play last night, that really terrific play he made that started the double play. Ruiz hit the ball actually, if you remember. He said, as he was feeling it, he said, in my eyes, I just thought one. He said, I did not think it was going to be a double play. But uh, as we saw in our eyes, we saw Derek Dietrich make a great turn. As well, he said that's about as much emotion as he's shown on a baseball field. He said, I actually did a fist pump <laughs> after they turned the double play. Here's Utley. And Saltalamachia smothers it. Well, it's a battle now for, for any catcher. You've got Heaney out there who has kept that slider down. That's where you want him to miss with it. But it's been a battle for Saltalamachia. There have been a couple of wild pitches. Utley pulls a ground ball. Jones down to get it. And he'll flip to Heaney in time to get the out. Heaney through the fifth. Phillies up 4 2. Loads the hot dog. She's got to get her hand out of there. Look out, Rich. Here it comes. Clear. 
this, this is the greatest invention ever. Get the mustard ready. Just look at the. I mean, you wonder how much of that hot dog is intact when it gets to the fan. Not that it matters. Maybe three or four fans have touched it by the time you get it. I know, smoldering mustard <laughs> on your hands. Let's go uh, down to Preston Wilson, who's had a, a close up view of the Fanatic, haven't you, for a long time? You know, the Phillies have something that not many other sports franchises still have, and that's a mascot that people are so in love with, and they have been since he's come on the scene. He surpassed the, the San Diego Chicken, uh, Mr. Met, any other mascot that you can think of in the major leagues. He's outlasted all of them. The fans here love him. And there's nothing that he does that they just cannot get enough of. I remember playing here, and not just the fans, but the players. The players are in love with him. All the visiting players have something that they do with him, whether they try to take his keys when he's trying to leave the field before the pregame or just kind of interact with him in some way. He's a big part of Major League Baseball, and the Phillies are lucky to have him. This is pregame. The Fanatic making sure that, <laughs> yeah, there you go. The umpires probably were on their way out. But it's everybody. It's the umpires. It's the players. <laughs> he doesn't care. He interacts with everybody, and everybody eats it up. You know, you talked about the uh, the chicken. The uh, famous chicken from San Diego was really the first to do in-game antics and all of that in San Diego. Then the Fanatic. And you're right about the fanatic. Mario Hollins is in with Garrett Jones, Ed Lucas, and the pitcher spot due up. 4 2 fills in the sixth on a gorgeous night in Philadelphia. The uh, city lights are starting to come on in downtown Philly. We've got a great look at downtown from the press box here. Brian Morris getting ready in Miami's bullpen in case the Marlins need to pull the trigger on a pinch hitter here in the sixth. Always a uh, talk to the guys in the bullpen. Always a, a little excitement in the Marlins bullpen here at Citizens Bank on that second tier row of fans. They can always stand, standing room right above the bullpen. And we were laughing. We were thinking, I think it was 2011, the guys in the bullpen locked Jose Seda in the bathroom for an inning. That was great. Great drama for sure. The All Star Game is coming to Fox, and it's on July 15th. And of course, it might be, it could be, it is, as Harry would say, the final All Star Game for Derek Jeter. And it should be an emotional night, Tommy Hutton. It actually starts with special coverage at 4:30 on Fox Sports One, and then the All Star Game at 7:30 on Fox. And Lucas at the plate. Reed Johnson has climbed into the on deck circle. Lynn University asks us about Pat Geno's Tony Luke's. Well, Rich and I had Tony Luke's tonight. Rollins gets the out. Hollins has two quick outs. That's always a, whenever we do emails and tweets from Philly on a Tuesday night, it's always what's your cheesesteak of uh, choice. We went out there. Not only to uh, get a cheesesteak, but also to see where the ball landed when John Carlos Stanton homered earlier this year. What was it about? We were out there about 5:30, 5:45. Yeah. Heaney is going to come up, so uh, no Reed Johnson, and with two outs, Mike Redman wants to squeeze at least uh, another inning out of Heaney. Yeah, I think had the Marlins gotten something going uh, offensively, then we would have seen Reed Johnson. Pitches away, and it's a ball and a strike. Bill wants to know: Does the Bat Boy travel? Come on, Bill. They uh, they do not travel. The Bat Boys. Every now and then, you'll have a Bat Boy who's related to a, a manager or coach or player. See a lot of that in uh, spring training. I think more so than during the regular season. But uh, yeah, that young man, a local kid, I'm sure. 
Heaney strikes out. And it's on to the bottom of the sixth. 4 2, Phillies. Nighttime in Philly. 4 2. Phillies up, bottom of the sixth. Social media night when the Phillies are in Miami on Tuesday, July 1st. $20 ticket gets you a baseline reserve ticket. Limited edition Marlins t shirt. A pregame Marlins Park tour. And you can purchase tickets online at marlins.com slash social media. After a rugged first two innings, Andrew Heaney is which, uh, has uh, pitched quite well. Say that three times fast. On the third, fourth, and fifth inning, just one hit allowed, and that was a Rollins single to get to us on uh, Twitter at Fox Marlins, on email, foxmarlins at gmail.com. Esteban wants to know will Heaney be a permanent fixture? In the Marlins rotation. He will be if he pitches well. That's the uh, that's the best way to answer that. You keep going out there and. Giving your team a chance to win. You'll get opportunity after opportunity. Howard hammers one. Stanton going for it off the wall. Howard around the bag. And he'll get to second gingerly. Amazingly enough, that's only the fourth hit for the Phillies tonight. It's one of the few sliders that stayed up. See how Salta Lamacchia had to reach back for it to get that bite to it. A little stutter step before he went down into his slide. Brian Morris has continued to throw in the Marlins bullpen, so I got a feeling. Well, and as I say that, here comes Mike Redmond. And so Red wanted Red to Red wanted him to get Ryan Howard, and he may have left him to face Bird with nobody on base. Ashley a left-hander on deck. Now he can't take any chances. And, and the other the other factor working here, the reason why he didn't let Reed Johnson or anybody else hit in that inning, is that he's playing short. On the bench, Danny Echeverria back in Miami had an MRI, a strained tricep as well. And so, Redmond on the mound. And he's going to go to the bullpen. So, Morris comes in, Heaney exits in the sixth.
Heaney goes five innings. He's responsible for Ryan Howard. He threw 95 pitches. Walked two, struck out five. And of course, uh, Marlon Bird, the two run homer, a big shot back in the first. We've been, we've been talking about the job that Brian Morris has done since June 1st, since joining the Marlins. He's been tremendous. Nine games, strikeouts, walks, great ratio. His slider has been a good one. He really has a nice downward plane on his slider. Gets good action on it. He's done a terrific job. Tommy, I have our angry email of the night ready to go. Bird one for two with that homer. Morris misses outside. The subject line in this email is that Twitter Tuesday sucks. <laughs> this is from Frederick. I've been emailing and Twittering you guys for about four years, and you have yet to answer one of my questions. I ask good questions. But you answer dumb questions like who's going to win the race between McGee Jones and Salty. I think your Twitter Tuesday sucks. Well what's his question. Well I feel or bad. Is he just ranted. No no he, apparently he's been sending questions. We don't get these directly but I feel bad. So Frederick send us some questions email them to the uh, email address and we'll try to answer them and and. I think customer service is something Tommy we're, we're high on here. On Fox Sports Florida. So send us some of those questions. We'll try to answer them. And we apologize that we suck on email Tuesday. We will try to make it better for you. Here's the address. So, Frederick, go to. Does Frederick uh, tweet? No, or no. Just email. Well, it says he does tweet and email, but if he'll email us, it'll probably be easier to find it. Or, or you can tweet us as well. You know where to find us foxmarlins at gmail.com. And that's the angry email of the night. Here's the 2 1. Fastball, little looper, and Dietrich drops the ball. Dietrich got to the ball, popped out of his glove, and Marlon Bird has a base hit. Ryan Howard was anchored at second and doesn't have the speed to get to third. Well, of course, he checked things over his shoulder and looked like Dietrich was there. He certainly was there. Ball got him on the heel of the glove. And he's going to be charged with an error. The Marlins came into this game having played 10 consecutive games without making an error. And they've made two errors tonight. Most errors in the National League by second baseman. Dietrich picks up his eighth. We look at Ugla at top of that list, and he hasn't even played the last month. Ashy now. 0 for 2. He bounced out the first, struck out in the fourth. Both starting pitchers last just five innings. That's a base hit, and that's trouble. Into the corner it goes. Howard's going to score. Bird is racing for third. They will send him to the plate, and the relay is cut. The Phils have two more. Cody Ashley having himself a nice series. That's one of those sliders we haven't seen many that uh, were up and didn't do a whole lot from Brian Morris. He's been down in the zone most of his appearances as a Marlin, but that one stayed up. Ashy with a big game last night had three hits and a big hit there. Ashy's numbers are starting to come up. 23 RBIs now. And an average right around 275. Here's Mayberry. Still nobody out in the sixth. 6-2 Six Phillies. Fastball is strike. Robert has an email. When will there be information on the fantasy auction pledge packs? I buy one every year and don't want to miss out. That probably will pop up mid July, and the pledge packs will be uh, available. The fantasy auction is on July 29th. 
The Washington Nationals will be in town. And it's the Fox Sports Florida Fantasy Auction. I want to say it will be the ninth annual. I think it's the ninth annual. Some great uh, and new experiences and packages. Pledge packs will have a lot of cool stuff as they always do. There will be Fox Sports one caps in the pledge packs this year, Tommy. We're signing the autographs this year. Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich. The Christian Yelich baseball in the pledge packs. You might see something like a Christian Yelich bobblehead in the pledge packs. Maybe something nice from Tommy Bahama. Ball in the dirt, knocked down. I believe there's a uh, gift certificate from the Clevelander in the pledge packs. Maybe some Marlin tickets in the pledge packs. You know, just to show that, that we don't have any insight on those. I signed up for one of those last year, and I was too late. So <laughs> make sure, make sure you get them early when they are available. You know, Morris is sneaky fast, 96 miles an hour. Two two. Swing and a miss. He had 97 with some good movement. And Mayberry strikes out. So up comes Ben Revere. <laughs> Suzanne emails. She wants to see Carl Pavano next to Nate Evaldi. First time she saw Evaldi, I thought he looked like Pavano. His nickname, of all these nickname, is Wreck It Ralph. Revere slaps it foul. With Travis uh, telling us that we. We are responsible for jinxing Brian Morris, who had not given up a run as a Marlin, by showing that nice graphic, and he ended up giving up a run. Yeah, we're responsible. You're right. Jones steps on the bag. Everything we do affects what happens on the field, right, Hut? Mm -hmm. We'll just not show you things and, and leave you out there in mystery. Not a real popular Philly right now is Dominic Brown pinch hitting for Hollins the pitcher. Pitch goes to the screen, salt to the mafia, and the run scores. What has been ugly just seems to be getting uglier. Way inside. 
another wild pitch the third wild pitch. From the Marlins tonight. The second time wild pitch is let a run in. Ball in the dirt. Breaking ball hit up into the seats. Dominic Brown getting the at bat here in the nine spot in the sixth. Three more runs for the Phillies and a 7 2 lead. That one scorched foul. Wild pitches, stolen bases, two errors, walks, hit batters. As clean as last night's game felt. A 4 0 win. This one has been uh, the exact opposite. Breaking ball, check swing in the dirt, and it gets away. And that's another wild pitch. So that's what, four wild pitches? Four wild pitches tonight. Rollins. Tonight hit back in the first. That was uh, the beginning of a three run inning for Andrew Heaney. Walked and stole a bag in the second, singled in the fifth. I think we brought it up, Rich, at the uh, very beginning of the game last night. When you play games here, you have to approach approach it the same way you do in Denver at Coors Field. Can't play sloppy, can't allow base runners. If you're going to give up a home run, Hope it's a solo shot. Can't walk guys. And the Marlins haven't done any of that tonight. A little bit of everything. A couple of good buddies right there, by the way, Heaney and De Sclafani. The middle in the center field, a base hit. Dominic Brown will get to third. Rollins has his second hit of the night, his third hit of the series. And Carlos Ruiz has come out. The CB patch on the Rollins jersey. Uh, WM wanted to know what the CB patch on that uh, uniform stands for. Claire Betts, who was the wife of uh, John Betts, who had a big share of the team. She inherited uh, the uh, part ownership, and uh, she's passed away. The uh, Phillies also lost Jim Fregosi. A lot of teams uh, lost Jim Fregosi, who was such a great baseball man. And of course, managed the Phillies to the World Series. 91 through 96, that magical summer of 93. They were beaten in six games by the Toronto Blue Jays. 
Jim Fergosi and his uh, cast of characters on that 93 team. His third baseman on that team, Dave Hollins, summed him up by saying he was a man's man, a player's manager, but most importantly, a great friend. Morris to the plate and he misses down low. Of all the appearances that Brian Morris has had, this has been the one where he's struggled with command. And he's unfortunately he's paying the price, giving up a couple of runs, and a couple of base hits. Having issues here in the sixth. And Ruiz swings and misses. Rollins at first. Counts three and one with two outs. Also, our fault, Rich. And Juliet points it out that the Marlins made a couple of errors tonight because we pointed out that they had played 10 consecutive games of errorless baseball. So that's our fault, too. It would be really tough to do a game and give out any plaudits or accomplishments if that were the case. Lucas to his left. You know, he's played great shortstop, Tommy. And he makes the throw to first. Whew. Thought he was in trouble there. In Philly, Marlins and Phillies in what has been somewhat of a messy game, especially for Miami. Clear skies, Citizens Bank Park, gorgeous night. Preston Wilson is in the house, along with the Rich Waltz and Tommy Hutton on email and Twitter Tuesday. And there's the line score: seven runs, six hits, an error for the Phils. Marlins have two runs, six hits, two errors, four wild pitches. Am I losing count here? You uh, are correct. 
And that's uh, the reason why the Phillies are up by five runs into the seventh. Ken Giles into the game. Well, we saw Ken Giles last night, and the one thing he he proved to us is that he can get to the upper 90s. He was he threw one pitch 99 last night. We have an email from Frederick Tommy. Frederick was the angry emailer that thought uh, email and Twitter Tuesday sucked, and he has. Uh, Titled this email, I apologize for my language. I was just very frustrated when I heard that race question, but I'll throw you two questions that I've sent in the past. Explain the difference between hit and run and run and hit. Good question. That actually is uh, asked uh, quite often. Hit and run is less than two out, nobody out, one out. Runner on base could do it with first and second, but we'll just say first base. You're trying to, you're trying to advance them. You're trying to stay out of a double play. So the runner takes off. It's the hitter's responsibility to make contact. And if he, I was always told a couple of things in a hit and run. Your first responsibility as a hitter is to make contact, protect the runner. If you can hit it behind him, that's even. That's even better. And if you can get a base hit, that's even better. So that's a hit and run. A run and hit is, you know, you'll see with, with a couple of men out, you'll see a runner take off, maybe stealing, and all of a sudden the hitter will hit the ball somewhere. Well, that's not a hit and run. He doesn't have to swing on a run and hit. Frederick, as a tip, if you want to know the difference, if you're at a ball game and you see a, a runner go with a hitter at the plate, Watch the runner. If the runner turns to watch what's happening at the plate, that's usually a hit and run. That's 99% of the time. If the runner doesn't look over his shoulder and is headed to second, just trying to flat out steal, and the batter makes contact, that's the uh, run and hit. That's uh, very good. Very astute. Now, he has a, it's a two part question, Tommy. We we really have to make things up for Frederick because. We've been hosing him so long here. Apparently. <laughs> and his second question is. Why don't you show. Fox tracks on every pitch like Big Fox does on their nationally televised games. And I believe ESPN does as well. Thank you very much. Gold Marlins Tommy. I've been a fan of yours since 1966. Well a couple things. Frederick giving away his age. There's a bouncer, Ashy to his left, Marisnik hustling down the line, and he's thrown out. The network that leaves the Fox tracks in is actually Turner, and you see that during the postseason on Turner games. Big Fox doesn't leave it in, but it does use it on some games. There are Saturday games that Fox does not use Fox tracks, but uh, on most the uh, large Fox shows especially in the postseason they'll pop it in and out and give you an idea whether a pitch was in or out give you pitch speed and all of that ESPN has a, a, a little different contraption sometimes they actually put a strike zone up over the plate but they don't often uh, leave that in during a whole game. By the way, did you see Tim Kirkchen uh, in the sausage race? I saw it. I saw him. I, I was uh, I was rooting for him. He he did not fare well, but uh, hey, he was against younger competition. He was. We didn't Craig uh, run as a sausage? Yeah. At one point, he had to go as the Italian, right? Craig did a lot better. I believe Craig finished second. Derek Dietrich at the plate. Giles bounces it at the plate and it's one and two. Craig may have more on that uh, on the post game. So Frederick. We appreciate you uh, sending the questions in. One. Admission by on our part Tommy and I don't actually. Get the emails ourselves. There's an email wrangler they sift through hundreds of them. Oftentimes if it's a subject that has multiple questions. We will choose one of the questions to try to answer it for everybody. 
So we apologize. Keep the emails coming. We appreciate you watching. And we appreciate you uh, being a good sport tonight and uh, sending us uh, the questions. And you're right, they are good questions. By the way, we fired that email wrangler about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> we sent him over across the river to Jersey. So there you go. Dietrich strikes out. The next Corona Marlins watch party is coming up Thursday, the 26th at Finnegan's River in Miami. See the Marlins against the Phillies at 7:05. Boy, Giles works quickly. He did not even give me time to tell you that you can meet Philly and the Energy Team. Four dollar Corona drafts. Go to Marlins.com. Stanton's up, and Stanton is doubled twice and bounced out. We actually saw this matchup last night. Giles came in and struck out Stanton. He struck out Casey McGee. Stanton fouls it back. Toyota trend. Giancarlo Stan, National League leaders, total bases. Well, he's added to that with two doubles tonight. He's got 20 on the season. He's a 20 20 guy. 20 doubles, 20 homers. By the way, I don't see McCutcheon, Gomez, or Puig on that list. Was McCutcheon up there? I looked quickly. McCutcheon was fourth on that list. Okay. Stanton swings and misses. Marlins are done in the seventh. In Philly, AT&T fan photo. If you hashtag your photo, look, he's playing bongo cam on the poor kid. Hashtag an FL fan photo. And uh, Andres looks like Andres has a room full of Marlin stuff, from bobbleheads to uh, jerseys to caps. That is your fan photo for the night. Chris Hatcher now. Emails and tweets tonight. This is from Shannon. I hope this makes it into your good email box. I moved to Florida from South Jersey two years ago. I was a huge Phillies fan. 
often homesick, and I can honestly say I love listening to you guys. Last night you got such a kick out of the fanatic shooting hot dogs at the other mascots. I thought, okay, I can live here and enjoy Marlins baseball, and that's from Shannon. Well, that's uh, well appreciated. Thank you. Shannon. Did you see us on Bongo Cam, Shannon? Yeah, we got a lot of tweets about that. <laughs> Shills that we are for anything like Bongo Cam. Although Disco Cam, I'm glad they didn't show us. Because we, we weren't real. We weren't real good on Disco Cam. Well, Chris Hatcher trying to be real good. There we are. You got it started. You, you know, you started it off, and I, I kind of came in. They moved the camera on me. I, I thought it was lined up with the bongos, and then you got lined up with the bongos. Utley takes a strike. Hatcher pitching here in the bottom of the seventh. It's kind of what this game has got to down five runs, four wild pitches, bongo camp. Well, Ricardo has an email. Utley has a base hit. <laughs> Ricardo says, I'm a combat veteran, and I enjoy hearing your calls of the game. Keep doing what you do. Very informative and passionate. Moreover, you say it like it is. <laughs> Dylan, who is 20 and a Florida student, has grown up as a Marlin fan, live all the way in Ocala, going to his first Marlins game on Saturday against the Athletics. Wondering if you guys have any must-sees First time going to a, a game at the New Marlins ballpark. When does batting practice open up? Would love to see Giancarlo hit some bombs to the outfield. Batting practice, uh, I think the gates open an hour and a half before first yeah, pitch. Yeah, home batting practice is a little early. By the time uh, the gates are open, usually the visiting team is opening. I, I know I always tell people who go for the first time to Marlins Park, one of the things I always say is walk around. Walk around the, the concourse, and take take the whole trip around the ballpark, and see all the angles, see all the food choices, and kind of relax, and make a couple of choices, find your seat, and enjoy the game. Go to the Budweiser Bar, the uh, balcony bar out in left field. That's a great place to uh, watch an inning. The taste of Miami in left field for a good Cuban sandwich. The bobblehead museum behind home plate. Get a smoothie. The smoothies are really good. Smoothies are good. That's behind and, and home healthy. plate. And healthy. Somehow I think I should own stock in that. In diamond juices. Diamond juices. Well, you go down there quite a bit. I do. So enjoy it. Your first uh, game at Marlins Park. Get there early. Walk around the outside of the stadium as well. And then uh, toward the inside. And you got to go to the Clevelander, right? I mean, that's part of the fun. After the game, if you hang out after the game, and as a college student, you'll uh, appreciate this, especially a University of Florida student. Big party after the game at the Clevelander. And you can go down and uh, get into the Clevelander. They've got a swimming pool there, they've got uh, live, lots of music, and it's a, a live scene. And there's a concert on the West Plaza after the game. Chino y Nacho. Chino y Nacho. Stop by the team store. Line drive. Jones makes the catch. Steps on the bag. And Howard lines into a three unassisted double play. Yeah, the team store's terrific. Yeah, pick up something uh, tell, to, to remember your visit. Yeah, by. tell Robin that uh, Rich and Tommy sent you. They have, I believe, the... University of Florida colored Marlin caps. So if you're a Gator student, you could be sporting a Marlin cap that's in Gator colors. That a very popular item. Florida, Florida State, Central Florida, and who am I missing of the 
I think FIU is the other school. That yeah, has. all the universities that uh, people have asked, uh, what about Miami? Well, all the universities didn't get in on it. So those are the ones that are. DJ Rosenberg in the bullpen. Resnick over and there and he makes the catch and the fills are done thanks to that Howard double play and a fly ball out from Marlon Burke. The command just wasn't there for Andrew Heaney. Big home run by Marlon Bird. Marlon's got an odd run on a, an infield fly rule. Utley dropped the ball, but coming in to score was Salta Lamakia. Wild pitches. The Marlins have had four wild pitches in this game. Two have resulted in Philly runs. Cody Ashley with a big base hit and doubled down that line, driving in a couple. That's the way things have gone tonight. It's seven to two. Phillies have the lead. We head to the top of the eighth inning, and the fanatic is rocking it out. <laughs> He's got. He gave the kid the guitar. He gave him the sunglasses. <laughs> That's why we love him. He is the fanatic. DJ Rosenberg is the new pitcher for the Phils. This was a ball game where neither starter. Was uh, overpowering. David Buchanan against Andrew Heaney. If you're just joining us for Heaney, it was a real tough start. He gave up the three runs. He was wild in the first inning. He hit Rollins. Ended up walking Chase Utley. Gave up a double steal on a throwing error by Jared Saltalamaki. A run came home, and then Marlon Bird hit a two run homer. So Heaney went five. Four hits, five runs, two walks, five strikeouts. McGee takes outside. Tell you one thing, the last two nights, you and I have been impressed with uh, Ken Giles coming out of the bullpen for the Phillies. Good job, by the way, by Chris Hatcher. Got help with that double play. The line for Brian Morris an inning two hits two runs none of them earned. No walks two strikeouts. And Hatcher a scoreless inning. Buchanan five innings six hits two runs. It's always hard keeping score. Announcing the game. And reading emails and tweets, but we try to do our best to keep you up to date. Sometimes on the game. we cross over. Oh, it's uh, you get a little. <laughs> a 
That one fouled back to the screen. So the Marlins had a nice run of, of 10 consecutive games. They were leading baseball without an error in those 10 games, an all time Marlins record. Preston, you had a chance to talk to Perry Hill about Miami's defense. You know, Perry was very quick to state that it's nothing that they've been doing differently. It's just a matter of sometimes you play games and the ball bounces your way. You can go through games where you get bad hops, where, you know, just uh, the speed of a base runner may cause an infielder to flinch or something, but then there's also times where you're in a position, the ball just hops in your glove, you get things going your way, and you end up with a nice stretch. Now, that doesn't mean that the effort isn't the same. The effort is always the same. They take the same amount of ground balls. He really expressed that. We do the same amount of work. We get guys going on certain days doing some things, some things others. Uh, but the one thing that he did say was key was you have to really manage personalities difference. Some guys you kick in the butt a little bit more. Some guys you got to pat on the back a little bit more. So to the Machia. Well there's there's no doubt. The uh, work. That Mike Redmond's coaching staff puts in. From. Perry Hill. To Frank Minichino to Brett Butler. To Rob Leary on the bench with him. You know, Reed Cornelius down to the bullpen. Press an area now, then we get an email or a tweet for you. And this one is addressed to both of us. It's actually a slight to us, but this is the first I've seen the the email. We all can throw our opinion in on this one. And it's to you, Preston. Preston, can you answer this since the other two guys won't? <laughs> Who do you think is sent down when Christian Yelich is activated on Sunday? Well, I, I was getting ready to answer it, but go ahead, Preston. You first. You first. <laughs> Hold on a second. So can I say that again? I don't know. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, this is a question you get often when a guy. We, we've gotten a lot of this question tonight. Okay, a go guy's ahead. A, a guy's about to come off the disabled list, and everybody knows that Yelich is healthy. Boy, that one is scorched. Howard got a piece of it. Saltalamakia, racing down the line, is going to get the hit, and he's aboard with one out here in the eighth inning. Question is if, if when Yelich is activated and he's due off, that hit, actually hit his left hand, he's due off on the 29th, which is Sunday against Oakland. Who might get sent down? We could throw names out. You could throw Marisnik out. You could throw uh, Justin Bohr out. There's a uh, Christian Yelich's numbers. I think as far as the outfield plays that goes, and this is just your speculation on my behalf, it would, would say Jake Marisnik simply because he doesn't have as much uh, seasoning as the other guys out there. And Ozuna and Stanton, those guys are really high in the league as far as RBIs and production. You know Stanton's not going anywhere. Ozuna's got a lot of home runs and high RBI potential. So I think the guy that would be left out right there would be Marisnik. But of course, and, and I would I would agree. Okay, but I will couch it with one of the reasons you don't answer questions like that if it's four or five yeah, days you away. You asked us. I know, <laughs> but I'm just telling the the emailer, which is uh, mystery eyes. The reason you don't answer that is in baseball, you never know. Something else could happen between now and then. Another player could get hurt. How many times do we see that happen? Now, that's not to say that Mariznick is not a great outfielder. I believe he's the best outfielder that the Marlins have as far as his ability to get the balls in center field. The routes that he takes, his first step is just better than anybody I've seen in a long time. And he's got a good arm. So he's got tremendous potential to be a great MLB player. And you want guys... Like Marisnik, let's say if it, if you okay, narrow it down, Marisnik, Ozuna, you want them playing. So if if Marisnik is the one that you have to choose, you don't want him up here playing a couple of times a week. You want him down in in Triple A, honing his skills, working on that pitch inside. High high pop up, Utley. Down the line in fair territory. Drops another one. Salta Lamachia headed to second. Utley throws him out. Utley has dropped two pop ups tonight. That one was a lot tougher than the first one he dropped. But they were both dropped the same way. He took his eye off the ball to look to see what's going on before the ball's actually in the glove. And you could, I saw it happen at full speed, so you know you're going to see it here. He goes out, he seems the glove slowly goes up, and he starts to peek. See that look right there? That's not looking the ball in. That little bit of time will cost you a catch. It's happening twice tonight. And it's really interesting because you wonder why he was peeking. Salta Lamaki was the runner at first. He wasn't going anywhere. But he did. You could see him take his eye off. 
to finish that conversation. You never know what happens in four or five days on a major league roster. Weird things can happen. The Marlins, of course, are dealing right now with the Danny Echeverria strained tricep. He had an MRI today in Miami. They're not sure how long he will be out. So Miami may have to make a move. That could affect uh, anybody else who's not in the uh, regular starting lineup or in the starting lineup in terms of position or spot on the roster. So. We do answer questions like that, but you, you, you steer away from that, especially if it's four or five day, days away from happening. Yeah, there, there really never is a bottom line answer, correct answer. You don't know. Breaking ball fouled off. You also get this one. Here's another one. This is from Matt. Hey, the Marlins have Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton, and Marisnik. What do they do with the excess of serviceable outfielders? Again, that, that kind of works its way out. The, the guys that play the best will, will play. Competition is good. You Believe want me. you want depth. You want competition at each spot. Every manager will tell you he would much rather have the problem of having guys that he has to send out than have the problem of trying to find guys who can play. And you you don't want players, especially young players, you don't want them to become complacent up here. You want them to continue to battle. You want to know what those guys in AAA and Double A are doing. And don't you think those guys in the minor leagues don't look? Because I know I did. Oh. Every week that comes by, that baseball weekend comes out. You're trying to find out who's doing what at what position for what team, and then you got your organization reports that come down. Hey, well, so and so was three for five last night. Oh, you're looking. Hey, when you were coming up, pressing in the minor leagues. Oh you, yeah. You knew everybody ahead of you that played your position. No, without a question. <laughs> you, knew, you knew what their name was. You knew how well they were doing every day. And neither of you guys had the internet, right? At no. That, at that time as minor leaguers? No, those were paper reports that came down that would get printed out by the organization every day. 2-2. Two, two. Tommy, every morning, would uh, roll out of bed and pick up a copy of the Spokesman Review. The Spokane newspaper Spokane. and he would look at uh, at what Wes Parker and Garvey who were the other first baseman in the Dodgers organization Ron fairly Bill Buckner, Buckner <laughs> fairly that's a pretty formidable group <laughs> that you had to fight through that one's hammered to right and deep and gone and Garrett Jones with a bolt as a two run homer the lead is cut to three with two outs here in the eighth. Second base hit tonight for Garrett Jones and for Jones home run number 10 on the year. His last 14 games now here at Citizens Bank Park. Garrett Jones about a 375 hitter. He likes it here. Well that's a solid swing. It's one of those situations too you you can't say well if the Marlins, Marlins had done this or hadn't done this and, and it was a one run game all of a sudden Garrett Jones puts you ahead. Because if it were one run game, BJ Rosenberg probably wouldn't be in there. Ed He's Lucas. in there because it was seven to two at the time. That's a great point. Ed Lucas swings and misses. Lucas and 0 for three night tonight. This is from Kevin. I'm watching the game with my wife. Wanted to know if I could get a simple hello. Her name is Kayla. I'm sorry, Kevin. We can't do that. Because if we do that for you, we have to do it for everybody. And so I'm, I'm sorry, Kayla. We can't mention your name on television. Hope they understand. Hope, uh, hope you scored some points with your wife. Jake Diekman, he of the uh, great stuff, the lefty in the bullpen. Fastball, Lucas fights it off. Anibal wants to know, and this is not from Anibal Sanchez. How do general managers, scouts, coaches, managers decide whether a pitcher is a starting pitcher or a relief pitcher? Why isn't a guy like Kimbrel or Greg Holland a starter? 
Holland, the terrific closer for the Kansas City Royals. Into center field. Lucas has a hit. Nicely done with two outs. It extends the inning so Tommy can answer that question. I was uh, looking at another tweet. Could you read that question again? Please? How do general managers, managers, pitching coaches decide whether a pitcher is a starter or a reliever? For uh, example, guys like Craig Kimball or Greg Holland, why don't they start? Uh, a lot of that time, a lot of those are decided in the minor leagues. We had one earlier about Marlins' first round pick, Tyler Kolick. Is he going to be a reliever or a starter? Well, right now he's going to be a starter. He's a big kid. He's out of high school. He's throws 100 miles an hour. He's going to be a starter. But as a kid progresses throughout the minor leagues, all of a sudden you learn things about him. You may learn that he can't go more than three, four, or five innings. So now you have to start looking at him as a reliever. And in the cases of guys like Kimbrell and, and Hollins, you, you have guys who maybe were starters at one time, but you, you saw the potential to close games and be closers. So those things are usually decided and usually work their way out in the minor leagues. But what I don't like in the minor leagues is when guys are pigeonholed into one job. You're 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 a reliever. You're a one inning guy. That's all you can do. And then they get up here and that's all they can do throw one inning I, that part I don't like that's what you told me 10 years ago Richard a one inning announcer nah, you're more than a one inning guy <laughs> You'd be prepared tonight too. Right, this, I know this, <laughs> this is a, a lot of twists and turns here Ryan Sandberg asked for the ball and he's going to Jake Diekman with Justin Bohr announced as the pinch hitter. For the Phillies, Marlins able to get deeper in the pen after a two run homer from Garrett Jones here in the eighth. Henderson Alvarez starts tomorrow night. You can start your tomorrow night with Marlins Live, brought to you by South Florida Honda Dealers. Nine questions for Salty and the entertainer, as we call Henderson Alvarez, on the mound tomorrow night. The entertainer in the three career starts against the Phillies has never beaten the Phillies. 0 and 1, but has a 2.25 ERA against Philadelphia. How about a Henderson Alvarez as an All Star candidate? I got no problem with it. I mean, three complete games, three shutouts, a terrific ERA. Here's Reed Johnson. So the Marlins had Bohr come to the plate, force the Phillies' hand. If anything, it forces Ryan Sandberg to get deeper in his bullpen than he really wanted to get. With Rosenberg in. Reed Johnson, another pinch hit last night. 
trying to drop down a bunt and he fouls it. For Johnson, his major league leading 11th pinch hit. It was an RBI single in the ninth inning last night. Well, and the other thing that Ryan Sandberg did, he forces Mike Redman to burn a couple of players with this move. Johnson pinch hitting for Bohr. And swings and misses. Out in front one and two. Bill's bullpen lately has been very, very good. Since June 3rd, they lead Major League Baseball in ERA 1.02. Opponents on base percentage. Swing and a miss. Johnson is down. Marlins are done in the eighth. They get two back on a Garrett Jones home run. Andrew Heaney giving up a two run homer to Marlon Bird, and the Phillies were off to a three nothing start. AJ Ramos out of Miami's bullpen. Heaney would go five innings, four hits, five runs, two walks, five strikeouts. Ramos in the game, Cody Ashi, John Mayberry, Ben Revere scheduled. Bottom eight, seven four. And Ashy has had a good series so far. Three hits last night, including a double, a two run double in the sixth. We don't get a chance often on uh, emails and tweets to uh, take a peek and see what's happened in baseball tonight, but the Mets clobbered the Athletics 10 to 1 to right. Stanton is after it. It's in the gap, and Marisnik is there, and he makes the catch. The Mets beat Oakland 10 to 1. Bartolo Colon beat Scott Casimir. Colon went eight innings and stuck it in the ears of the uh, team that he pitched for the last couple of years. Eight strikeouts for Colon. Casimir, a former Met, 
Three innings, eight hits, seven runs. Just checking on the uh, start, Clayton Kershaw tonight in Kansas City. Of course, Kershaw coming off that uh, 15 strikeout no hitter. Well, the Dodgers have a one to nothing lead. Kershaw has given up three hits, but he's not given up a run. And he has six strikeouts in his five innings. The Nationals are in Milwaukee. And right now the Brewers have a 2 1 lead. Top of the sixth. The Giovanni Gallardo start for Milwaukee. Jordan Zimmerman. For Washington. That's one of those uh, nice matchups you kind of keep your eye on. Braves are in Houston 3 2 lead over the Astros bottom of the sixth. Pittsburgh winning again in Tampa Bay 6 to 3. Pirates can get over the 500 mark with a win there to 39 and 38 at 6 3 bottom 9. In uh, Tampa Bay. As Bob Costas would say. The Cubs have a 1 nothing lead over the Reds. That's in the fifth. Reds are over the 500 mark finally at 38 and 37. Cardinals got some bad news. Two of their starting pitchers, Michael Waka and Jaime Garcia, have been placed on the disabled list. Ramos misses low. Colorado's beating the Cardinals 3 1, bottom of the third inning. That's a big blow to the Cardinals. Waka's a shoulder stress fracture. And Garcia just re aggravated the shoulder that he had surgery on. He was just back and throwing the ball pretty well. Adrian Beltre had his 2,500th hit of his major league career in a ball game tonight. I saw it today where Steven Strasburg has announced that he is going to quit chewing tobacco. And Strasburg, of course, played for Tony Gwynn at San Diego State. Addison Reed, who also announced that he was going to quit chewing tobacco, is the closer of the Diamondbacks. He was a college teammate on that San Diego State team. He also played for Gwynn. And it's, uh, I think it's good to see players. And you hope that more will follow. You hope that there are more players that will, will think about it a little bit longer and give it thought. Ramos misses in. Of note for the Phillies, Tony Gwynn Jr. has rejoined the Phillies. Uh, an outfielder, obviously, he was on the bereavement list for the last week, but he took extensive batting practice today. Had a, uh, a long uh, conversation in the dugout well before anyone was on the field with uh, Ryan Sandberg. Preston, you had a chance to talk to uh, a guy who's a terrific kid and who certainly has been through a, a real struggle, not only this week, but uh, watching his father fail health wise over the last uh, couple of years. You know, when you have a situation come up like this, it's, it's always tough because you want to really talk about and talk about the sadness of missing you know the Tony Gwynn senior who was there I got a chance to talk to Tony Gwynn Jr. and say hello to him you know tell him that his dad was a great man but I remember Tony Gwynn Jr. around the ballpark with his dad occasionally you know it, like other people probably remember me as being that kid and I will say this he has his dad's demeanor that calm presence uh, that his dad has he definitely has that but what he also has is his dad's work ethic and you know his numbers aren't as good as you would like for him to be but you got to know like if your dad's sick and uh, there's a lot going on that's going to affect you on the field. Uh, so I'm sure he'll get his numbers back up. But it's nice to see him back in uniform doing what he loves to do. And in times of great stress for baseball players, this is our sanctuary. We come here to work and we're able to put everything off for a while. So it's nice to see him get here and uh, be able to put those things on the side for a little bit. Has his dad's smile, has his dad's voice as well. Marisnik. Out in center field and let's listen as uh, Gwynn is introduced here tonight. There were a lot of Philly fans that were hopeful for a nice uh, warm ovation.
Number 19, Cody Quinn Jr. It's a nice move. Number one by the fans. You expected that. But a nice move by Sultan Lamakia to go to the mound and allow it to breathe a little bit. And so the Philly fans welcome back Tony Gwynn Jr. You see he's had a good season against the Marlins. Impossible obviously to live up to his father's accomplishments. His father one of the greatest hitters in, in baseball history. But uh, he's had some big moments uh, early in his career. Born in Long Beach like his father San Diego home played at San Diego State. And he takes outside. A junior was a second round draft pick at the Milwaukee Brewers. Back in 2003. He had a big postseason hit. In his career. I think the biggest compliment that anyone ever paid Tony Gwynn was just throw him down the middle because he's so good. If he sees the ball all the way he knows what to do. If he sees it in he knows what to do. The ground ball Garrett Jones will step on the bag. And the inning is over. To the ninth. 7-4. Philadelphia upcoming schedule for the Marlins brought to you by Lexus of Pembroke Pine. 6:30 for Marlins Live both tomorrow and Thursday. Oakland in town. 6:30 start Marlins Live on Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday different times. It's a 4:10 first pitch on Saturday. 3:30 for Marlins Live. Sunday the series concludes with the Athletics. 12:30 start Marlins Live. Christian Yelich scheduled to return on Sunday. For Miami as well, and for Miami, down to their last three outs, Jonathan Papelbon into the ball game. Papelbon Rich is a guy whose name always surfaces when you get closer to that trading deadline. With you know, a, a seasoned guy, he's having a good year. Papelbon with 17 saves this year. I think importantly for him, he's. He's kept the walks down. Batters hitting just 192 against him. So all in all, Jonathan Papelbon having a pretty good year. 303 career saves. Jake Marisnik, Derek Dietrich, Giancarlo Stanton. First pitch from Papelbon is a strike. You know, you get that uh, contending team who might. Uh, 
need to add that piece of a closer. No, well, they better have a big checkbook. They better have a big checkbook. You're right about that. He still is in the middle of a four year fifty million dollar contract that runs through next year. With a possible. Vesting option. Depending on appearances. For 2016. So. Whoever takes him on. Would take on money possible money in 2016. And the Phillies might have to help them out financially. Because I think if you are a. If you are a team that is rebuilding and if the Phillies indeed get to mid July and decide they need to retool. I think the last thing you need Tommy is a high price closer. But certainly Papelbon's a guy that has postseason history and postseason success. Of all their veteran players, and they all are high priced. To me, he would be the most likely, and I don't know if he would be the easiest, but he would be the most likely to be traded. I would throw Marlon Bird's name in there. More Bird, affordable too. He is. Bird is in the, uh, I believe, the first year of a two-year, sixteen million dollar contract. Two and two to Marisnik. Then you got Dietrich. Then you got Stanton. And a high pop. Ben Revere's way in center. Marlins live after the game is brought to you by Checkers. Andrew Heaney's night. And a sloppy night for the fish. Four wild pitches. A couple of errors that after a record setting run of 10 consecutive games without an error, a record for the Marlins franchise, breaking the record held in uh, 2003. That team that had uh, the terrific infield Lowell, Gonzalez, Castillo, and Lee. They had a run of nine consecutive games without an error. That was the, the club record. Dietrich pulls it foul. Applebine, as you watch his fastball, he's lost some on the fastball. He used to be mid 90s. He's lower 90s. A few sliders. He'll throw that. He'll use that splitter. Dietrich takes up. Miami just trying to get the tying run to the plate. The other thing rich about Papelbon you go back to. His first full year with the Red Sox in 06. He's averaged well over 60 about 65 games a year. Along with piling up over 300 saves so. He's been relatively healthy. He was a five time all star. He had that great postseason for Boston in 07. Seven appearances, 11 innings, no runs. That's a, a durable closer right there. Three, two to Dietrich. Popped him up. And there are two outs. Chase Utley was just glad that one wasn't his way. 
He's had a rough night with pop ups. Here is Stanton now. Giancarlo doubled in the first, bounced out in the third, another double in the fifth, and has struck out. It's a four game series. Game three tomorrow night. Anderson Alvarez, A.J. Burnett. That should be a very Fun matchup. That's an entertaining matchup. <laughs> Marlins live starts it at six thirty. Stanton reaches out and punishes that ball into center field. <laughs> well, a three hit night for John Carlos Stanton. He came into that at bat at 306. A couple of doubles. He has 20 doubles. He has 20 home runs. Spend the extra few minutes before you go to bed tonight. Put some votes out there for John Carlos. He could use him and he deserves him. Here's McGee. A lot of fans tonight talking about McGee and his shot at the All Star game. And while there's a, a lot of uh, third base candidates, you can vote for both McGee and Giancarlo Stanton. Go to Marlins.com. McGee has driven in another run tonight so 47 RBIs he was tied for fifth. Coming into play tonight. Stan of course leading in homers and RBIs. And McGee hits a bouncer to short Rollins backing up. To first in time. And the Phillies. Outlast the fish in this one Papelbon. Gets the save. 7-4. The Phillies win it. Marlon Bird, a two run homer. That was a big blow early in the ballgame against Andrew Heaney. Final thoughts when we return.